th this whole process has been difficult on everybody involved with it. Um, uh, I've been dealing with Matthew now since this happened, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm sad for him. I, I'm more especially sad for the victims and their families. It's just a, it's a sad thing. Um, Matthew uh, had asked me to read a statement to express his, his deep sorrow at what happened and his, his uh, sadness and his regret for what happened. Uh, he feels the sorrow that the families are feeling as well and uh, you know he wanted that to be known. He made that pledge because that's what he truly feels. I mean you have to appreciate that he has been under uh, care for the last two plus years. He's been receiving uh, medication to help him manage his, his uh, psychiatric uh, symptoms, his delusions. And he has reached a point where he can truly appreciate reality. And anybody in that position would, I think, make the same kind of pledge that Matthew DeGroote did. Move forward. He'll be taken to the Southern Alberta Forensic Psychiatry Center. He'll remain in custody there or in another forensic psychiatry center until such time, if it ever occurs, that the Alberta Review Board deems that he is uh, no longer a significant release. Um, if they ever reach that point, then I hope that there would be a, a gradual reintegration into society. But I mean, if they don't reach that position, he could spend the rest of his life in custody.